my lucky cat. Welcome to more Dream Daddy. Who's excited? I'm excited. Time to make another dad. Oh. Uh. I mean, I could use the same dad over a bunch of times, but I like creating them. Build that dad. Okay. Let's go with Theodore. That's a good name, right? I need some coffee ASAP. Chai, please. I know I'm not trying to woo him this time, but. I literally would not drink anything else. Let's start unpacking. Hey, Joseph. I have nice. heard many times that there is a secret about you. He probably wants his plate back. Now, I don't know what that secret is. Because I refuse to find out by anyone other than myself. 
Yeah. But I hear there's a secret. I like your necktie. Pet the doggo. Dare we try butt pets? Ah. It's a new technique. <laughs> Brag, brag. Item. More items. More items. The last item. He beat me. <laughs> How dare you! You're so perfect! Go take a nap. Hey! Bro. Uh, hey, bro! Uh, oh. uh, hey. Uh, I'm going clubbing tonight. Mm. I'll take care of oh, the at a bar and meet Robert. I still love Robert's rugged handsomeness. Hey. Uh -huh. mm. I'm not Hi. buying you a drink. Hey. Uh -huh. Jacket. Uh, problems. No, thank you. As much as I really, really would want to. Go back to sleep. Just move. Oh. Mm. Uh, mm. Oh. Yeah. Let's go to mm. the mall. Mm. Mm. Ah. Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh. Mm. Uh. Yeah. Dad. Dad. Peruse the band T-shirts. What? Oh, no. Hi, Damien. Uh, I very much enjoyed your company when I went through your route. Excited to beef up my grilling skills. Okay, I gotta talk to Joseph. I need to know what your secret is now. Burger time. Hey. Oh. Ah. Nice. Nice. I mean, I got a burger in me. I gotta know what your deep dark secret is. Seeing how long I can sleep for. I'm scared. La da 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 da. I'm sorry. Okay. Netflix and grill, baby. My trusty grill. Top tier grillmanship. A good father. Romantic comedies. Hmm. 
napping together. I frequently forget things sometimes. How proud I am of my child. <laughs> Welcome. You got that. Okay, Joseph. Voted Maple Bay's number one youth minister for five years running. Living in my hometown with my beautiful wife and our four amazing kids. If I'm not in church, you can catch me out on the open water, setting sail on the seas of adventure. I love playing guitar and crushing my kids at Candyland. Lead the community in a fun mixer and my six string. I didn't know you played guitar. My loving wife. Ship captain, feel good movies. Lovely night on the town with my wife. The good book. How I can be a better man, husband, and father. What could your dark secret possibly be? His family is a little weird, but Joseph seems cool. I should take him up on his offer to hang out. Wait. How do I hang out with a priest? I don't go to church. Should I be Jesus-y? I imagine Joseph's family staring at me as I fumbled through some sort of prayer attempt. Maybe not too Jesus-y. A light smattering of Jesus. Will he want me to pray? Is he going to pray at me? Do I have to pray at him? Talking to Joseph, huh? Gah! Amanda, how many times have I told you not to sneak up on me like that? I selectively ignore it every time you do, Pops. Her eyes are a little puffy, almost as, as if she'd been crying. Hey, are you doing okay there, kiddo? I'm fine. Oh, of course. I'm hmm. fine. I just started thinking about how there are a bunch of people who still, who still don't know that... Who still don't think aliens exist, and it's bumming me out. Like, space is so infinitely huge, just because you can't conceive it doesn't mean it can't exist. And I understand the f Fermi paradox, but to completely write off aliens, there's so much stuff we just don't know. I'll be okay. I'm glad. But aliens are definitely out there, and I hope they'll one day be my friends. Remember how you used to be afraid? Yeah, but whose fault was that? Whose fault was it that I watched Fire in the Sky when I was five? Amanda, you stole that VHS from my closet and locked yourself in your room to watch it. I honestly forgot about that part of the story. Wow, I really brought all those years of anxiety over being abducted by aliens on myself, huh? I pat Amanda on the back. And now you want your new best friend to be an alien. Look at that personal progress. But seriously, you know you can talk to me about anything, right? Yeah, that's why I'm talking about aliens with you. Okay, just remember that it's okay to be sad. And also remember that I love you very much. And only want what's best for you. Huh. That's all. Alright, alright. Jeez, don't make me cry again. Amanda looks over my shoulder at the screen. Joseph can't read your mind, you know. If you want to talk, just message him. But I've never been friends with a priest before. What do I talk about? My favorite Bible passage? Ice cream socials? Khakis? <laughs> First of all, he's a youth minister with a tattoo, not a priest. There's a difference? Uh. You're overthinking it, Dad. Listen, just put it like uh. this. Hello, neighbor. Thanks again for the invite to the BBQ. I'd love to hang out soon if you're not too busy. Isn't that a little too business casual? Mm. Fine, fine. Give me the keyboard. I got mm. this. Amanda focuses on the keys. Joseph, it was great meeting you and your family. I'm still new around here, so if you'd like, I'd like to hang out and get to know you. See ya. The smiley, the smiley is a nice touch. Almost immediately, I receive a response. What do you say? Huh, that wasn't too bad. Hi, Theodore. If you're not doing anything in a bit, the kids and I are baking treats for the church bake sale today, and we'd love to have you over. 
It'll be a blast, so let me know. He uses a lot of exclamation points. I'm not concerned about him get signing his name with a tilde. I'm willing to let it slide this time. I respond back. Sounds like fun, Theodore. Well, guess I'm doing this. Great, come on by the house as soon as you're ready. We'll be here. Save a brownie for me? Promise you won't sneak up on me anymore? Amanda stares at me, I'm blinking. I don't make promises I can't keep. Real to a fault, Pops. Aww. And Dad, please don't be weird about the religion thing. Me? Weird? Never. I make the short walk to Joseph's place. Don't be weird, Theodore. But what if they hang up a bunch of crosses? Or collect those little porcelain babies? What if they're all praying? Do they pray before dinner? During dinner? Over, porcel over the porcelain babies? The door begins to creak open. A shadowy figure obscured on the other side. Who's there? Uh, Theodore? <clears throat> the door opens the rest of the way. It's Joseph Eldest. What's his name? Hey. Hey! Uh. This might be very important. Chris? Hi again, it's... I'm Theodore. I know what your name is. Oh yeah, we met at the barbecue. How's the, uh... Please don't say it. Jesus! Chris blinks slowly. Maybe he didn't hear that. You're weird. Is your dad... Before I finish, Chris walks into an adjacent room, leaving me in front of the open doorway. Home? This was a great first impression. For a moment, I wonder if I should go in there, further subjecting Joseph's family to my winning attitude and artful charisma. Mercifully, Joseph... Mercifully, Joseph peeks his head around the corner. <laughs> Theodore, you made it! Joseph approaches with his arms wide. I'm so glad you could come by. Are you ready to bake? I am not. I'm as ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> That's the kind of semi-confidence I like to see in a baking assistant. Come on in! Yeah. Joseph leads me into a bright, spacious home filled full of nautical knickknacks. This is w isn't what I imagined at all. It's actually pretty charming. <laughs> I believe you met Chris, who left you outside. Huh. Chris? Hmm? Oh. Are you going to apologize? Oh, right. Sorry. I tried to make eye contact with Chris, but he keeps looking away. He must be really shy. It's alright. Next time, just be a little more inviting to our guests, okay? Sure. Chris seems to relish the chance to escape the conversation and quickly vanishes into his room. Joseph turns to me apologetically. Don't take it personally. Chris likes to keep to himself. I mean, we didn't start off on the best foot in the world. Plus, being the eldest in a big family can't be easy. <laughs> Try being the middle child. We try to cut him a little slack where we can. Ah, and here are the twins, Christian and Christy. Say hello to Theodore. Hello, Father. Hello, Theodore. <laughs> Kids, come on, dial it back on the creepy twin stick. Creepy twin stick. Saving. Can you two say, come play with us, dear? Oh. oh, no. The twins stare up on blinking in unison. Come play with us, dear. Joseph covers his mouth and looks away, but he's clearly holding back a big laugh. This is it. This is my dad world series. Okay, now say, please help us, Mothra. Please help us, Mothra. Uh. No, I can't take it. Joseph is trying his best not to break in front of his kids. The twins seem to be catching on and look eager to burst their dad. But can we keep it up? Go with something obscure. Now say, he who walks behind the rose. Uh-oh. Okay, that won't work. 
Load! Go with something creepy. Now say, they all float down here. <laughs> they all float down here, father. <laughs> Joseph can't take it anymore. Despite his quiet protest protestations, he's laughing pretty hard into his hand. His ki And the kids giggle with him. The twins, obviously pleased with the new arsenal of spooky weapons, leave the room to terrorize the rest of the community. My work here is done. I'm going to be hearing those lines for a few weeks. Next time we hang out, I'll try to teach them some lines from the thing. <laughs> Alright, so it looks like we've got a bit of a troublemaker on our hands. You think you can out-trouble a c career pro? I don't know about yeah, that. I'm suddenly interrupted by a loud crash from the kitchen. What huh? now? That doesn't sound good. Christy? No one responds. Joseph furrows his brow and motions for me to stay where I am. Wait here for a moment. Joseph rushes into the kitchen. I remember this with Amanda. Half of uh, half of fatherhood is trying to keep your kids from finding creative ways to kill themselves. And he's got four. Talk about worry. I take a seat on his surprisingly pristine couch and twiddle my thumbs. Examine the bookshelf. It's a pretty sturdy wooden bookshelf. It looks handmade. Did Joseph build this? There's a big stack of what looks like travel magazines. Hyenas of the Serengeti, the underwater mysteries of the Antarctic, and on and on. Seems like Joseph really loves a good adventure. Unless this is a merry thing. Who knows? Next to them are a couple of different Bibles. Looks like he's covering all the Bible bases. King James, New American Standard, the Bible for teens. He is a cool youth minister after all. On the on a higher shelf, there are a bunch of old romance novels. Judging by the wine stains, themes must have been Mary's. The newest one looks like Hot Body Johnson, Sex Detective. The eighth installment in... Wait, this is a series? There's a couple of cool knickknacks on the coffee table in front of me. Hey, a cross! Hey, another cross! This one looks a little different. And a third cross. Unified design aesthetic. Smart choice. There's also a brass thing here. It looks like something a sailor would use to navigate with. I think they're called sextants. Heh. <laughs> Sex. Well, you have this many kids and things are bound to end up on the floor. No matter how hard you try to keep it clean. I spot a terrifying cloth doll that appears to have both arms pulled off several times. It's been stitched back together a lot. The tag says C plus C, of course. I set that down and spot a houseplant. Hey, little guy. Keep being you, tiny houseplant. I spot one less thing on the floor next to the houseplant. It's a silver necklace. Wow, this looks expensive for something casually tossed on the floor. If there's a story here, it's none of my business. It's been a while. I guess I should go into the kitchen and see what's up. Oh. I walk into the kitchen and find Joseph holding Christy in one arm. She seems a lot calmer than she was a minute ago. I raise an eyebrow at Joseph. The twins are a lot more manage manageable when they're separated. Uh. Where's Christian? He ran off. Christy dips a spoon into the brownie batter and gives it a taste. Dad, it's too <laughs> sweet. You're too sweet? No, I'm not. <laughs> You're so sweet we might have to water you down, down with spiders. No, not spiders! Joseph begins tickling Christy with his free hand. Between the laughs and squirming, I don't know if he's got a hold of her. I don't know... I don't know how he's got a hold of her. 
But that girl is locked in place. Man, the man is a professional child wrangler. Christy fixes me with her best puppy eyes. Save me from the spiders! Spoon duel! I grab a wooden spoon and point it in Joseph's direction. On hand, her foul beast! Okay, Theodore the Valiant, let's see what you've got. You may have defeated me at Tarantula Ridge, but now I have the upper hand. Joseph gently puts Christy down behind him. Have you come to squash me, knight? Or have you mer merely fallen into my web? I'm no mere fly, Spider King. Now on guard! For a minute or so, Joseph and I mock duel with the two dumbest looking spoons in the room. Eventually, I strike a killing blow in the invisible heart between his arm and his body, and Joseph recoils in horror. Blast, I'm defeated! You can never best me, Spider King, for I have the power of... I sneak a tea taste from the brownie batter. The magic. Oh man, this is Bye. way too sweet. Christy begins jumping up and down excitedly. My hero! Christy hugs my leg before making a surprisingly fast yeah. exit. Hey, wait! Do you want to break brownies with us? Christy he hesitates then shakes her head no again. Uh. Sparkle Pony. Sparkle Pony? Joseph looks confused. Oh. You don't want to bake with Dad now? You want to play with Sparkle Pony? Yes. Okay, go. Before Joseph can even finish his sentence, Chrissy is out the door and down the hall. Ahead. <laughs> Joseph sighs deeply as he stares into the chocolate batter. He tastes it again, face twisting. And that is still way too sweet. So what made oh. that crash? Egg beaters on the no the no the um floor. Oh. It's my new techno single. Still haven't thought of a B side. Now we're both looking into the batter. It's got a sickly sheen of sugar and chocolate candies throughout. I have a feeling Chrissy had something to do oh. with it. We need a fresh start. Oh, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm not really a baker, but... Wow. Don't even sweat it. The bag, the bag came with instructions that have mysteriously vanished along with my daughter, so we'll probably be fine. Probably. Wow. Yeah, probably. He certainly looks confident. All right, Theodore, you baked a cake from a box before. Once. How hard could this be? Now grab a spoon and get ready to rock. Mario Batali, save me. Joseph and I set to work, cracking the eggs and mixing the things and then pouring the things according to how we assumed the back of the box would tell us to. Things go according to plan and soon enough we have a solid batch of brownies. Woo! Wait, Joseph has a little dot of batter on his nose. Well, Theodore, wait to use those dad skills. I bet you baked a few box mixes in your time. His nose. Joseph? Hmm. All I have to do is bring these to the bake sale, and voila! Duty done. Ahem. Oh. Now help me find Christy. Keep your eye out for a pony that sparkles. Joseph, hold huh? still. What? Thumb in position, and got hey. it. Joseph's eyes grow, go wide as I gently wipe the chocolate off his nose. Is he blushing? Uh. Oh, uh, thanks. No problem. In less than a second, I've licked the batter off my finger. It's really good batter. <sighs> we, uh... We should find Christy. Mm. Yes, yes. We should do that, Theodore. Joseph quickly composes himself. Alright, she can't be far. You take the delta position and I'll watch your six. Do you even know what that Link. means? Alpha Tango Sparkle, Roger Roger. Joseph starts making his way down the hall and calls back to me. Take the brownies and the rest of the stuff I baked earlier today while I got Christy. We'll meet while well, I get Christy. We'll meet you out by the car. Hey. Joseph and Chris Joseph Christy and I arrive at the church parking lot to find out to find fold out tables and pop up tents already set up. Looks like the bake sale is already in full oh. swing. Wow, this place is packed. This is packed? 
there are a few people miling, ming, milling around. Must be a value pack. If you can count a city's population on your fingers and toes, this counts as packed. Point. <clears throat> Chrissy rockets out of the car and into the lot. Is she running on jet fuel? I want to sell brownies! Okay, okay, let's get set up. <coughs> I want to see Mom! She's down by the other row of tables helping with another group. Want to go over there and tell her I said hi? Mom! Chrissy zips off immediately. Joseph seems unconcerned. Does she always run that hey. fast? Yeah, and I can only catch her half the time. These knees aren't what they used to be. I remember when Amanda was her age, I couldn't get her to sit still for five oh. seconds. Yep, great age oh. to deal with. While Chrissy's gone, Joseph and I arrange all of our baked goods on the table and settle in. So, are we allowed to eat any of our own goods? Look, if I don't see nothing, I don't say nothing. The man upstairs has strong feelings about snitches. Does he actually? Joseph shrugs. He eats a brownie. It looks like some sort of other stall is... Some of the other stalls are selling drinks, little handmade crafts, and other sweets. Whoa, someone brought a soft serve ice cream machine. I gesture to it. How are we supposed to compete with that? Please, this isn't my first time to the rodeo. The bank sale rodeo. There's actually no rodeo here. It's just a bake sale. I think you and I put together put together can make one pretty convincing argument for these brownies, don't you? I hope so. Hmm. Of course we can. We high five. If you bake it, they will come. It's not too long before we have our first hey. customers. Hey dude. Hiya. Matt, Carmen Sita, great to see you guys out oh. here. Happy to support a good cause. Plus, you know, as the owner and proprietor of the Coffee Spoon, an establishment that specializes in baked goods, I have to scope out the competition. Mm. Joseph leans in close to me. This guy knows his stuff. Stay on your mm. toes. So, what recipe did you use for these brownies? Don't say you use the box recipe. Don't say you use the box recipe. Let me tell you a story, Matt. The way we, the way they made brownies in the old country. Yeah, that was all thanks to Grandma oh. Cunningham. Travelers from far and wide would make the pilgrimage to her sleepy little town, simply to be amazed by her masterful use of chocolate. All that knowledge and experience, all that experience, it was passed oh. on to me. Ha, sure. Joseph leans over again to me. Well, I want to lie, so there! Actually, I will go with, um... And I should really say... <laughs> Oops, not that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, save. We improvised. I just let the baking spirit move through me, you know? A little bit of flour here, a pinch of salt there. It's sort of like interpretive dance, but with oh. cooking. Interpretive cooking, yes. You can never make the same thing twice. Every batch is special. There will never be another batch of brownies with the exact flavor sensation that these right here have. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity, oh. Matt. All right, all right, we'll take two. Actually, we'll take three. I ring them up and high five Joseph as our happy customers walk away. See, not so hard. Yeah, I'm hot off the good feeling uh, from the last sale. Who's next? We sell baronies to a bunch of people I don't recognize, but who clearly know Joseph. Eventually, another familiar face pops up. Theodore! Brian. It's Brian. Close enough. 
Can we interest you two in any of our fine sweets and treats? Sure. You sure I can? I bet I could eat 10 brownies. Must resist urge to be competitive? I bet I could eat 11 brownies. Let the man buy his brownies. So we'll put you down for 10? <laughs> uh, better make it just two. One for me and one for Daisy. <laughs> Will he like me more if I take on the challenge? I bet I could eat 11 brownies. They used to call me Brian Hollowleg Harding back when I was in the competitive circuit. Think it could go brownie for brownie with me? 12 brownies. Okay, Joseph is not fond of co competition. We improvised. <laughs> Let the man, man buy his brownies. So we'll put you down for ten. Ha, uh, better make it just two. One for me and one for Daisy. Coming right up. Are you excited for the youth group movie night, Daisy? Oh. Yeah, what's the movie? It's a surprise. Joseph leans over to me. It's the Fast and the Furious. Oh. Really? If you think about it... There's some heavy religious undertones. Joseph hands a baggie to <laughs> Daisy. I made sure to give you guys the edges. <laughs> Clearly the superior part of the brownie topography. Thanks, Joseph. Our two customers walk off with their purchases. Joseph and I survey our stock. These are selling pretty hot. At this point, we'll have enough money to pay for a new paint job on the church pews in no time. Wait, what oh. happened to the pews? Ernest spray-painted his rapper alias onto them. Young Steinbeck. I would have gone for a young man in the sea, but I can respect uh. that. <laughs> Speaking in uh, ministerial terms, Ernest is hard to reach. In father terms, Ernest is kind of a turd. Being a cool youth minister seems like a lot of oh. work. It is, but it's worth oh. it. Although sometimes I wish. Never mind. Mm. What? It's kind of silly, but. <laughs> Do you ever wish you could just drop everything and go lounge on a beach somewhere in the tropics? Drink fruity blended beverages, fall asleep on a hammock? You know, basically live out a Jimmy Buffett song. Joseph, I think this. I think about this every single day of my life. My dream is to live in Margaritaville. Oh. One day, my friend. One day we'll be on island time. We make a couple more sales to some church patrons. Everything seems to be going smoothly. Off in the distance, I spot my old buddy Craig. Mm. Craig! He's going to be hard to sell. Craig is a f Craig's a fitness man. I think he comes to these bake sales to test himself to see if he has the, the resolve to refuse processed sugar. Oh. Are you sure you're ready for this? We go way back. I got oh. this. Craig jogs up to our to our table with Brer and Hazel in tow. They're each finishing an ice cream cone, so it's unlikely we're going to sell on sell them on brownies too probably won't be able to sell the baby. She's impossible to read. It all comes down to Craig. Uh. Hey, bros. Hi, Uncle Joseph. Hi, Amanda's dad. Would you be interested, interested in one of our delicious homemade brownies? Uh. Hmm. I don't know. You can't spell diet without die. Remember that one time? Okay, I'm going to save real quick. Remember that one time? Hey, Craig, remember when we were freshmen? Remember how uh, our next door neighbors pranked us by switching out our laundry detergent with dish soap and how the washing machine exploded with suds? And then we decided to get them back by baking brownies for them by uh, sprinkling inten high intensity hot sauce into the mix, and then we watched them cry after eating hey. it. Ha! <laughs> I would feel bad. But we had to clean up the laundry room ourselves. Anyway, <clears throat> anyway, these brownies are like that, but without the hot sauce. Maybe you should get one more for old time's sake. 
Craig thinks for a second. Hmm. Well, the girls just want a game. You know what? We'll take one for each oh. of us. Even River? Oh. I'll eat hers. You got yourself a deal. The day winds down and we're pretty much out of items to sell. Everyone starts packing up. Chrissy eventually comes back and immediately falls asleep in Joseph's folding chair. Box to mix, huh? Mary saunters up to us. She looks like she'd rather be anywhere else than here. Oh, hi, honey. Yep, they're selling like hotcakes, which is actually their chest brownies. Cute. Oh, my God. And boring and safe. Um, hey, Mary. Mary's eyes dart over to uh. me. What's the rookie doing here? <laughs> okay. I was just hoping to introduce Theodore, uh, Theodore to the rest of the community. Uh. uh huh. You get a load of this freak show? What? Hey. Weird folk is all. Holier than thou types. Hmm. Don't you think, Theodore? Mary, Ugh. let the kid answer the question. Uh. They seem nice. They, uh, they all seem like they're excited to help out the church. That's pretty cool, I guess. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Mary, can we talk about uh, this later? Oh, am I embarrassing you in front of your new friend? Joseph doesn't respond, trying his hardest to keep his cool. Can we please talk about this later? <laughs> sure thing, hey. honey bear. Mary turns her attention to me. Hand over the cash. Uh... Oh. Jesus, I'm not trying to rob you. I'm in charge of the funds here. I hand over the cash we've made. It feels like a hefty wad, if I may say so hmm. myself. Thanks. Uh? Now give me your wallet. What? Uh. Give me your wallet. You think this church is going to fix itself? Oh. Mary. Hmm. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sorry, I'll work on the whole pretending to be happy thing. Mary leans in and whispers to me. Hmm. He's really good at it. Mary walks off without saying goodbye. Yeesh. Um, I'm really sorry about that. Are you okay? And what is her deal? Also have a brownie. She really likes pushing your buttons, huh? Yeah. Joseph shrugs. Oh. No marriage is perfect. You ready to head out? Okay, but... Will saying anything else. What's her deal? Wow, what's her <laughs> problem? She enjoys a good button push. That seemed like a lot of good button pushing. Ooh, you did not like that. Brownies fix everything. This brownie will alleviate this situation. Oh. I take a brownie and split it in half, offering it to Joseph. He takes it, we eat. Oh. How's that feel? Better. You ready to head out? Yes. Joseph and I load the folding tables back into my car. Christy nods off the moment Joseph straps, straps her into the car seat. I, Just, I drop Joseph in front of his house. A small yawn sneaks out of me. Looks like I tuckered you out, huh? I'm a sleepy dad. I think I might finally be crushing from all the sugar. Ha, oh. <laughs> I won't keep you up then. Thanks for helping out today. Happy to do it. Also happy to eat brownies. Oh. Well, next time I promise we'll do something a bit more exciting and a bit less free labor. And I'm sorry about the whole Mar thing with Mary. You shouldn't have had to see that. It's fine, really. Uh, yeah. I know, but first hand got domestic problems aren't a good look. You barely mm. know me. Let me make it up to you next time. It won't be Margaritaville, but... We'll do something fun. Promise. I smile. Yeah. I'd like that. Oh, and one last thing. Joseph tosses a clean grabbed brownie through the window. It hits me in the face, but I'm able to catch it. It's the last one. You earned it. Joseph, please don't leave me alone with this brownie. Nope. Too late. I'm already walking away. But. <laughs> bye. Joseph walks up to his home. He waves at me before carrying Christy inside. Well. Looks like it's just you and me, Brownie. Save the Brownie. I pocket the Brownie. This might come in handy down the road. Oh. 
I step inside to find Amanda doing homework on the hmm. couch. Hey, father unit. Hi, child that I'm required by law to care for. How's homework? It's really fun and educational. Really? How long have you known me for? Right. How was the bake sale? Good. I think I really could have made a good life for myself as a brownie hmm. salesman. Glad to yeah. hear it. So, so mm. what? Were there any extra brownies? Or did you maybe sneak one? Or... I think for a moment and realize that I still have the brownie that Joseph gave me. This would probably do better in someone else's stomach than mine. Heads up. <gasps> Wait. I hurl the brownie toward Amanda. It hits the wall behind her and falls on the ground. Nice throw. She scoops it up and smiles at yes. me. Thanks, Pops. Hey, if you're not going to bed anytime soon, would you be game for some real shark hunters of Orange County? I thought the last hunter got eaten by a shark. He did. I sit down next to her and cozy up with a blanket. Awesome. Okay, did I do good? I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles. This is the same. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Welcome. You got that. All right, Joseph. Let's hang out again. It's been a long day of clipping coupons. Looks like there's a sale on boxed brownie mix. Hmm, that reminds me. I wonder what Joseph's up to. I should see if he wants to hang out. Or if he wants to go to the store with me and use these coupons. Looks like he's online. Hey Joseph, wanna hang? It takes a moment for Joseph to respond. Theodore, hope you've finally recovered from your brownie induced coma. And I know I promised you a fun hang, but tonight I'm actually chaperoning a youth group mixer. Amanda's invited, of course. If you're not doing anything, you should come. Oh, that sounds nice. And be a chaperone with me, because I need the help. Less nice. I think for a moment. I'm a little bummed out, of course. I suppose I wanted some me and Joseph time. Maybe to get to know him a little better. Ah, oh, what the heck. My friend needs my help. I type back. Buddy, if you need me, you got me. Just tell me where I need to be tonight. Joseph lets me know the details. It starts pretty soon. I should get ready. I knock on Amanda's door and peek in. Hey, Amanda. I'm about to head out. Where are you off to? Are you going to go extreme couponing? I'm actually going to chaperone this youth mixer dance thing that's happening at Joseph's church. He says you're invited, but if you don't want to come, I'll cover for you. Hmm. You know what? I'm down. Maybe I can make some new friends. That's a good attitude. But I'll have you know, I'm mostly doing this for the potential of free food. Thank you, Amanda. You get four b daughter points today. Can I trade them, f trade them in for our daughter lava lamp? Sorry, you only have enough for a daughter spider ring. Or some of those daughter plastic jumpy frogs. I like those things. They try their hardest. It's inspirational. Mm. We arrive at church to find nobody's there. The decorations and balloons and everything, but no leaves. Mm. Hmm. I've been to a couple of dances in my life, and not that I want to paint myself as some sort of dance expert. But generally, dances require people. And those people need to be dancing. All of a sudden, Joseph jogs up to us. He looks frazzled. You're here. I need your help. Gesture hand gestures to the hand-painted banner hanging above the church door. It reads, Jesus is coming. Yikes. Well, that's certainly a thing. 
God made all things, Amanda. Uh. Except for the banner. Ernest made that. I... I genuinely can't tell if he meant that maliciously or if he just can't spell good. You know what God also does? Forgives. <laughs> he forgives teenagers and he never, ever breaks their box mods. Mm. Are you going to break Ernest's, Ernest's box mm. mod? No, Amanda, that would be mm. a sin. I think it's th the one right after hey. Sloth. Theodore, I need your help to get this down before anyone sees it. I can swing that. Amanda, can you help? Physical labor, huh? Hmm. Amanda begins rapidly scanning the mostly empty room for an escape route of her own. I have to go set up the food. The food's already set up. I'm gonna do a final inspection pass on the food to make sure it's up to code. I'm gonna eat your food. Amanda bolts so... Amanda's able bo to bolt away before myself or Joseph can get another word in. Oh. Woo! She can really book it when she wants to. Her father was a giant pair of legs. I dated some giant arms once, but it turned out they were alright. He must have been devastated. It was Armageddon. Uh, no, it's... I get it. <laughs> I'll workshop it. There's a gem in there somewhere. Yeah. I'm really glad you're here, Theodore. Are you enjoying my company, or did you just lecture me out here for my strong arms and height advantage? Yeah. A little of both. It's always something with you, Joseph. Nice. Something handsome and pious. You know that pure. Okay, Google, what can you get for me? Pious, Def devoutly religious. You know that pious, debatable. You just alluded to breaking a child's vape pen. Hmm. I would have lost the debate. You ready to do this? Let's make some magic happen. <sighs> magic isn't real, Theodore. God said that. God was also a bush one time. Hmm. True. Joseph and I grab a stepladder and walk over to Ernest's Hi. banner. That turd Ernest had one final trick up his sleeve. Looks like this nightmare is stapled and taped six ways from Sunday. Any ideas? <laughs> What happened to your strong arms and height advantage? Ah, right. I forgot about those. But I realized my oversized dad fingers are far too large to get a leverage on the tiny staples. You got a hammer I can use to pry these <laughs> off? Theodore, this is a church. We get a little nervous around hammers. And nails. Yeah. I'm kidding. We just don't have a yeah. hammer. But we, ha but we have to hurry. The youth will be here any moment and I'll never hear the end of it if we don't fix this wait I have an idea I want to grab the marker that Ernest used to draw this thing and jump back on the ladder we can't get it down but we can send a different message I only got one shot here let's do this I'm able to turn the U into an A and an L somehow. It's a little tight, but it works. Well, that's true, I guess. 
Bask in his calming pres presence, Joseph. Relax. Crisis averted. Let's just hope the youths don't notice. Joseph checks his watch. Hmm, the DJ should be here by now. Just then, the door swings open, and a man struts in with his DJing equipment. Wait, you're not the usual guy. What happened to Evan? Evan knew exactly when to play the Cupid Shuffle. Right. Hey, hey, I'm not Evan, but Evan sold all of his DJ equipment to backpack through Europe, so I'm filling uh -huh. in for him. I do envy him, though. What I would give to drop everything and start over. Haha. <laughs> Are you? All right. Feelings, all right. I'm better than all right. I'm DJ Spin Master Quinn. He sighs heavily. Feelings, I usually do trivia nights, but I moonlight on the ones and twos to give myself a sense of purpose in life. Is he? Is he okay? Well, you'll have to do. You have a playlist of fun songs that youths will like that won't inspire impure thoughts or tempt them to the dark side right the dj thinks for a moment <laughs> believe me buddy i got what you need okay great i'll let you, i'll let you get set up the dj leaves let's keep an eye on this one He sounded like he was going to play Creep by Radiohead on repeat. After some time, kids from the community start filing into the dance hall. Some of them seem to notice our sign hack, but they don't seem to care. Most of the kids group off into clusters, standing in circles and casting sideways glances at the other groups of teens. Man, I do not miss being a teenager at social functions. Hey, hey, party people! Everyone in the room turned their attention to the DJ. DJ Spin Master! <laughs> DJ Spin Master Quinn coming at you with the sound that people want. We're off to a good start. The next uh, tune goes out to all the ladies in the audience. Ladies, let me hear you say, yeah! A few half hearted yes echo through the crowd. All right! He says again. Um, man, it's been a heavy couple of days. The next one's actually just for my wife, Sandra. I hope we can work things out, my little honeysuckle vine. Now, who wants to listen to Radiohead's Creep? The DJ begins playing Creep by Radiohead. Uh, Amanda slides up to me, pizza in one hand and punch in the other. Creep, huh? Bold choice for a youth group. Let's see where he goes with this. After the song finishes, he plays Creep again. Is the DJ crying? <laughs> if you watch the kids really closely, you can catch them cringe every time Thom York swears. Huh. There they go. Maybe we should do something about this. Joseph runs up to us. He's killing the vibe. They're listening to swears. Sad swears. We have to do something. You guys should try giving him a pep talk. Maybe work him up to Everybody Hurts by Rem, or at least, or at the very least, No Rain by Blind Melon. You want to help us cheer him up? Uh, actually, I just saw my friend, uh, Fred. Frederick. Frederico. Frederico? He's from Latin. I didn't know you were taking a Latin class. I'm not. So, he's from the country Latin? Dad. Yes, it exists. Don't Google it. You can go, Amanda. It's fun. And she's gone. Joseph and I make our way to the DJ booth where Spin Master Quinn is having a quiet cry. Hey, bud. Hey, hey, hey my dudes. How's the party uh -huh. jamming? It's, uh, uh -huh. not? Aw, oh, I'm sorry, fellas. Just taking a moment to find my groove. Uh -huh. Gotta play the sand tunes to properly appreciate the bangers, right? That's what Jesus would have wanted. Um, 
Now stop me if I'm out of line here since I've never been a DJ and don't have any current plans to become one, but I don't think that's how it works. The kids come here to have a good time. You gotta cool it on the sadness. Oh. <laughs> hey, buddy, if it's problems you're having that's with... Good stuff. Joseph leans in close to me. Uh. What was his new wife's name again? Susan? Wait, I think it was Sandra. Uh... Sandra? Yes. If you're having problems with Sandra, I can help you too. I do counseling. It's my job here, and I'm very good at it. Oh, I don't know. I can tell you're hurting. Nobody volunteer voluntarily listens to that much Radiohead on repeat unless they're going through some tough times. Trust me. I know. Joseph places a hand on Spin Master Quinn's shoulder, who immediately collapses into Joseph's embrace, qui crying quietly. There, there, bud. It's gonna be okay. Th thanks. I'll, I'll put on some dance hall anthems. You're the best, Spin Master Quinn. With yet another crisis averted, Joseph and I return to the dance floor, where Amanda's waiting with an ice cream cone. They have ice cream here. Good work, Amanda. How's it looking out there? Well, for a dance, there's not a whole lot of dancing. Looks like people are starting to bail, though. <laughs> This is a disaster. Don't be so hard on yourself. This ice cream? Top notch. Uh -huh. I'm sorry for dragging you into this, Theodore. You and Amanda should just go home. I'm not going to make you stay here for the train wreck. It's not a disaster. We can still fix this. Fix this. We can... I suddenly realize what we have to do. Amanda, get out of here. I don't think you're going to want to be here for this. Or be seen with me after this. Oh god, you're not going to... I throw my car keys to Amanda. I'll get it right back with Joseph. Just remind him for me as I am right now. Not as what I'm about to become. Amanda nods. Nice knowing you, Pops. She runs out the door. Joseph, I'm going to turn it up on the dance floor. With luck, we can get these youths in a, into it as well. Yeah. Are you in or out? Joseph stares at me. He knows what has to be done as much as I do. <laughs> See you on the other side. See you on the other side. Joseph and I walk out to the dance floor in the middle of the room. The youths all stare at us, unsure of what we're doing. Time to get our groove on. Let's throw them off easy and work our way up to the more technical stuff. Start with the lawnmower. All right, let's rip this. Let's rip start this baby. I'm. I start lawn mowing the dance floor. Joseph seems to respond to that and decides to mow another patch of grass on the oh. dance floor. That's the stuff. <clears throat> uh, roll the dice. Oh. Whoa. Whoops. Okay, so I guess it doesn't matter. Start with the lawnmower. <laughs> All right, Theodore, let's turn up the heat. Sprinkler! I pull out the classic. Hand behind head, pointer, finger out. I'm pointing at and make direct eye contact with several of these in the room. I think that makes them feel uncomfortable, but I push past it. Joseph understand. We must. Joseph understands. We must water the lawn. We just came off the end of an imaginary drought, and the grass is dying. Don't worry, imaginary grass. We got you. I look around to the youth. They're getting into it. Nice work, but we better pick it up, or they'll lose interest quickly. The cabbage patch. You can never go wrong with the cabbage patch. Joseph follows my lead. We both take our arms and move them around in a circle, as I assume... Assume you would do in a cabbage patch. I look around to the youths. I think they like agriculture. They're not looking too lively yet, but we can still turn it around. Moonwalk. 
I start sliding my feet backwards. I can't tell if it looks good or not, but I think these kids have seen enough people doing moonwalks that they understand the general concept. <laughs> Joseph makes a moonwalk attempt as well. Surprisingly, dude pulls it off flawlessly. I look around to see the youths. They're cheering. All right, time for the big finish. Dirty dancing style. I approach Jos Joseph and uh, m motion that I'm about to lift him up. Are you? Are you strong enough to do that? I don't know. Without regard for human safety, I summon all of my might and lift Joseph above my head. This isn't quite dirty dancing, but Joseph is a good sport and spreads his arm while I spin him in a circle. I look at the crowd. They seem to love it. The kids swarm the dance floor. They're all laughing and dancing to the music. Looks like our job here is done. Somewhat obligingly, the kids take the dance floor and start to move around. Before long, they're starting to laugh and enjoy themselves. It was dicey, but we done our jobs. Come on, the rest of the chaperones will take it from here. What? I have something to show you. Joseph leads me out to, of the main room and down the stairs, uh, down various darkened corridors of the church. I can barely see anything and find myself tripping over my own feet. Joseph, I think I lost you. His hand finds mine in the darkness. I'm right here. I'm glad I can't. he can't see me blush. We keep walking. Where are we? This church is huge. We're almost there. I actually have to admit that I was a little dishonest with you. I didn't just invite you here to help me chaperone. What happened to lying being one, being one of the ten things you're not supposed to do? I think there's an exception when you're trying to surprise a friend. Joseph closed the door behind us. I guess we're in a random room in the depths of his church now. What could he possibly have planned? So last time we talked about escaping to an island where we could live out an easy tropical life where our only worry is to find that lost shaker of salt. Since we can't actually do that, I figure I could bring a little of bit of the tropics to Maple Bay. It's not quite Margaritaville. But it's but something like that. Joseph throws on the lights. Welcome to the Margarita Zone. I look around as my eyes adjust to the light. It's his office, but there are twinkle lights strung across the walls, little garlands of fake flowers, and two beach chairs set up in the front desk, in front of the desk. There's a blender and two glasses sitting on the table. Ukulele music plays it softly in the background. Joseph, this is, this is amazing. There's no pop tarts. There's no pop tops to step on here, buddy. You did this for me? Joseph takes his seat and gestures for me to do the same. I did this for us. I think we've both earned it. I saw him while Joseph purrs us both margaritas. You really went all out. Yes. I have a flair for the dramatic, and you can't lead the community if you don't know how to make a good margarita. I take a sip of mine. This is a killer margarita. I would follow this man. Do you think the dance is gonna go okay without our sick dance moves? No, not here. You're missing the point of the Margarita Zone. Margarita Zone is a place of rest and relaxation. It's a place where you can kick up your feet and forget about your worries for a while. Watch out for blown out flip flops. It's a real fear. Thankfully, no heels will get cut in my version of Margarita Zone. Joseph gestures to the makeshift island bar he's made. You know, it's funny. This reminds me so much of when I was younger. I've been meaning to ask, what did you do before you started preaching? It's uninteresting. I left home and got into a lot of trouble. What kind of trouble? 
Trouble meant I got to go wherever I wanted, whenever I wanted. I hitchhiked around the country, went on adventures, met all kinds of people, did some stuff I'm not too proud of. But I was young and in love, and I didn't have to answer to anybody. And now I host fundraiser car rushes and take the kids to soccer practice on the weekends. Sorry, I don't mean to get heavy here. It's okay. It seems like you spend a lot of time taking care of others, but not enough time taking care of yourself. If you need to talk about it, I'm here for you. Joseph stares deeply into the blender filled with ice and margarita mix. It's just... I think about Margaritaville a lot. Or, I guess the concept of it. A place where I could strum on my six string while I wait for the shrimp to boil, drink margaritas all the time, forget my worries. It's an easy life. I hired Margaritaville once, but I think the closest I'm ever gonna get back to it is Margarita Zone. A short and occasional reprieve from daily life. Is that such a bad thing? This is pretty yeah. nice. It doesn't last forever, that's the rub. When you're in Margarita Zone, it's not like your problems have really gone away. You're just choosing to ignore them. Maybe you're looking at it the wrong way. Maybe Margarita Zone is actually better than Margaritaville, because Margarita it's Ville itself is an impossible ideal. Remember what Spin Master Quinn said? Sometimes you have to play the sad tunes to appreciate the bangers. If stepping stepping on a pop top is your biggest concern, how could you possibly ap- appreciate the boiling shrimp? <laughs> hmm. And Margarita Zone isn't landlocked to this office. I think it's about finding a little, uh, the little pieces of Margarita Zone throughout your day and taking joy in those moments. Uh-huh. That's awfully optimistic of you. It doesn't have to be anything big. For me, I think it's being able to quietly do war jumbles and drink some strong coffee in the morning to see my daughter smile or... I smile at Joseph. To spend some quality time with a good friend. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. I can feel myself leaning closer to Joseph. Is it just me? Or is he leaning closer too? Joseph tenses up. He downs the rest of his margarita and hops up out of his chair. (laughs) It's getting late. We should head back. Sure. Joseph and I make sure the dance wraps up without incident before he takes me back to the cul-de-sac. I hop out of Joseph's car before he pulls into his own driveway. Thanks again for the help. Thanks again for Margarita Zone. Maybe we'll go back there one day. If we do, it'll be my own damn fault. (laughs) Joseph chuckles and drives away. (sighs) I walk into my living room to find Amanda curled up under a blanket and groaning on the couch. Hey, Panda. You feeling okay? (sighs) Dad, I have a tummy ache. Eat too much youth group food? I drank too deeply from the well of life, and now I pay the price. And by well of life, I mean that big lukewarm punch bowl of seltzer, juice, and sherbet. Amanda slides to the floor with an elongated groan. Need anything, kiddo? A time machine that goes back approximately two hours in the past so I can warn myself of the folly of excess. I'll pour you a glass of water. Love you, pops. How'd the dance go? Oh, I crushed it. Got the kids on the dance floor to, at the expense of my dignity. A fair trade. Also, everything hurts. I'll see you in the morning, kiddo. Night, dad. Alright, how'd I do? I've never had that much fun in my life. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. (coughs) 
It's a beautiful night and the air smells so fresh, so I decide to take the long way home. I casually stroll through the neighborhood, taking in the sights and sounds of a suburban city with a low crime rate and wide walkable sidewalks at night. As I approach the bar, I can hear patrons inside cheering. Oh, I bet the game is on. I wonder if my team is playing tonight. A drop of water hits my head. I know, it's a lot of... No, it's lots of drops of water. It's pouring green. Maybe I should wait this out inside. I order a beer from the bar and settle in. It turns out that my team isn't playing tonight, but I can certainly enjoy the game regardless. The bar is usually crowded, and the feeling of... Camara dear over a shared love for the game makes me smile. Sports are nice. I look over into the corner and spot none other than Mary sitting alone in the corner nursing a cocktail. Mm. Something about here seems different to this time. Now that she's by herself and not hanging off some younger guy, she looks so sad. A pang of guilt shoots through me. Does she know? Is it beca is this because of me? Am I a homewrecker? Hi. I decide to go say hello. I walk over to her booth. She doesn't look up. This she taken? She still doesn't look up. I take a seat anyway, and she finally <sighs> notices me. You. Okay, this was maybe not the best idea. <laughs> hey. Hey. Having fun with your new best friend, Joseph? Uh, he's a great- I'm so glad! I'm happy for you, too. Mary, I'm not- I'd never accuse a, you of anything on Cooth Theodore. You're just having an innocent, very platonic time with my husband. A supportive friendship. Oh. You're a good friend, aren't you? Oof. Someone is. I'm there when he needs me, Mary. Unlike some other people in his life. Uh. So you're an expert on my marriage now. It doesn't take an expert to see you two are miserable. Then what does that make you? We were miserable a long time before you stood it, started poking into our business, buddy boy. Don't come around thinking you're some paragon of empathy just because you got involved where you weren't welcome. Mary takes a long sip of her drink. This a, was a mistake. You know, you're really not his type. I'm surprised. <sighs> Mary pays her tab and strides out of Kim and, uh, Jim and Kim's without looking back. What do you mean I'm not his type? I could be anyone's type! Well, it's been a long day. I'm just about ready to pack it in, and after a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, this is the same. <laughs> Skip. Leave her alone. Hmm. Uh. Keep fast forwarding, buddy. Uh. Uh. The best friend? Uh. Oh. Ugh. <laughs> the gossipy one? What did she say? I can't believe that. Oh no. It's not dumb. Real friends don't do that, Manda Panda. I love you too, Dad. Welcome. You've got dads. Okay. I'm sure. I'm ready to commit. I really want to see you, Joseph again, but after that weird encounter with Mary? I don't know. <coughs> He's my friend, why, right? I should be able to hang out with him, and, isn't it, and it not be weird, right? Right? The computer pings as a message flies into my inbox. It's Joseph. Like actually hang out. No manual labor, no impromptu therapy sessions with sad DJs, no kids, just you, me, and the open ocean. 
Wait, how are we gonna get on the open ocean? Whoa! Press. Present. Presses. Precise. How are we gonna get on the open water? Open ocean, you might ask? Good question. Joseph owns a yacht. If you're interested, I'll meet you down by the marina, and you can check out the goods, if you know what I mean. I mean yacht. Let me know. Joseph owns a yacht? I'm gonna be as surprised as you are. You've been holding out on me, your only daughter, whom you love. Wait, did you think that I was actually having... Did you actually think that having me as a father would somehow afford you the fringe benefit of getting to go on a yacht? Mm -hmm. What else did it get me? I'm literally paying for your college. And how much does college cost? You guessed it. The exact price of a yacht. I would give up on all my hopes and dreams to live on a yacht. Sail the seven seas. Grow a really long gnarly bit. Beard, marry the ocean. Mary's, uh, Amanda stares off into the m middle distance, thinking about her future as a boat hermit, I guess. Relax, kiddo. Joseph's inviting me onto his yacht. It's going to be a yacht of fun. I'm glad you're excited, but that doesn't mean you get to start throwing out puns. Why yacht, Amanda? Well, I gotta go get ready to go on my friend's yacht. I start to walk away, but Amanda stops me. Hey, in all seriousness, I hope you have fun. But make good choices, okay? But, Dad! Don't stay out too late, or you can't go to Jennifer Longforth's birthday party this weekend. She promised me she would prom propose to me, but we ended up going with Logan Crutchfield. I'm not going anywhere near that party. Good bit, Dad. Good bit. I respond back to Joseph, letting him know I'll be there. A queen marina complete with local mom and pop shops and a small diner frame the bay. I've gone for a few walks by the bayside to stare enviously at, at all the nice boats before. Joseph should be around here somewhere. Gosh, this is fancy. I feel a little out of place. Hey, Theodore. Joseph, where are you? Up here. I look up. Joseph waves to me atop a huge yacht. I've never been on a yacht before. You never forget your first. I glance at the name on the side of the boat. The St. Peter, huh? Inherited, the, inherited this thing from my pops. Real fire and brimstone type. Love to yachts. So what's the plan, Captain? I figured since last time we went a bit sideways, we could cast our lot out on the open sea. Wrestle with Neptunes that sail on the seas of adventure. You're kind of a goofball when you're not wrangling your kids, you know that? Joseph smiles and winks from his perch. I have no idea what you're talking about. Joseph hops down and extends a hand to me, helping me up onto the yacht. I'm thrown off, I'm thrown off by how soft his hands are. Does he moisturize or what? They are never stop thinking about his hands. Pure thoughts. Gonna be on a boat. Alone. With Joseph. On the open ocean. It's a yacht. He's married. It's fine. This is fine. After undoing the mooring and climbing into his captain's seat, Joseph slowly takes the boat out, ringing the big steel bell with extra emphasis, even though nobody else seems to be around. Shoving off, boat launching, man and boat launching as one. The St. Peter navigates out of the marina and into the open water, with Joseph doing the occasional steering flourish as the boat bobs along with the waves. He seems a lot more relaxed out here. Joseph is definitely in his element. 
This is the part where we wrestle Neptune. So please remove your shirt and roll in some talcum powder. Luckily, I brought my Neptuning fork. Ah, uh, can do. I dramatically pull off my shirt. My dad bod illuminated in the reflection of Maple Bay's rippling water. I'm strong. Nice. Not bad. We might have to tag team Neptune together. I'm suddenly worried that I haven't applied a strong enough SPF sunscreen. I might get a sunburn. I put my shirt back on. For a while as we watch we watch as the trees and waves pass by uh, pass us by. Where are we going? A little further out. It's a lot quieter, quieter once we get out on open water. Plus we could see whales. Whales are cool. I don't trust whales. Nothing should be that big. Noted. Joseph maneuvers the boat past some buoys. He sighs. I wish I could get out here more often, but, you know, family, wife, saving souls. So many souls, I can barely hold them all. I watch Joseph work the boat. Despite his age, he doesn't look like he's slowed down at all. And from here, I can see how toned his muscles are. In pure thoughts. Joseph and I boat in silence as the bay gets smaller and smaller behind us. I decide to take a peek over the edge of the ship. The wake of this thing kicks off is intense. I wonder if Joseph would ever let me water ski off his yacht. Hey, dolphins! Joseph, there are dolphins! So you're scared of whales, but not dolphins. I feel like there's an unspoken truce between man and dolphin. I would be more than comfortable riding a dolphin into battle. Dolphins are way more dangerous. Sometimes they drown their own babies for fun, you know. I can trust nothing on... Can I trust nothing on the open oceans? I like to think that I'm pretty cool. Alright, Joseph. It's you and me versus the entirety of marine life. I yell out to the ocean. You're all spineless invertebrates. <laughs> you tell him, Theodore. <laughs> and here we are. Theodore, welcome to the ocean. I look out into the vast expanse of blueness. Yep, that's the ocean. I'm suddenly struck with an overwhelming sense of claustrophobia despite being in a wide open space. I'm on a boat with a handsome man. A handsome married man. And there are whales beneath us. Nothing should be that big. It's a little daunting, isn't it? Do you trust the whales? You know, there are more dangerous things in the ocean than whales, right? Like tuna. The tuna is an apex predator. What about sharks? Sharks are tight. Oh. It's the tuna you gotta watch out for. And the whales? Hey, wanna look out wistfully over the sea with me? Joseph and I head to the bow of the ship to do some quiet contemplation. You know why? <sighs> Shh. Quiet contemplation. Oh. I'm alone with my thoughts. Cool. I look out to the sea for a bit, then over to Joseph. He looks so commanding as he surveys the ocean. It feels like he really is at home on the water. What Mary said to me at the bar. I can't stop thinking about it. Is she right? But she's terrible to him. He's unhappy. He deserves better. I don't know what to think about this, but I just feel so drawn to Joseph. I should say something. So, uh, about Mary. Joseph continues to stare off into the distance. It's, um... Hmm. Well, if you really want to know... Suddenly, I hear a sputter coming from the engine room. Joseph runs over to the boat's controls and taps some dials. I guess we can talk about Mary later. Oh, okay, so... We might have a small problem. What small problem? We are out of gas. The whales aren't gonna get us. The whales siphoned our gas! It's okay, I can just call one of my boat buddies to come tow us back in. 
Joseph pulls out his phone. Phone. Just kidding. I can't do that because there's no service. And check my phone. I don't have service either. Should we just submit ourselves to the whales? Well, I do have an old radio in the office, but it's broken. Are you handy with tools? I'm a dad. If the radio is anything like frantically putting together a bike on Christmas Eve, it should be no problem. Let's take a look and see what we can figure out. Joseph directs me to the radio and showcases its insides. Hmm. I don't know how radios work. I think there's just some frayed wires in here. If we can reattach them, we should have a working radio in no time. We stare into the interior of the radio. I'm not entirely sure what I'm looking at. I don't think Joseph knows either. Er, you know what? Let's just throw some stuff around in there and see what works. Oh boy, I'm making that radio. Well, a rubber ducky isn't going to help, that's for sure. Condom's definitely not going to help. What the actual baloney am I looking at right now? An eraser. I don't think I need that. And I lost the red wire. Well, that did something. I'm certainly doing something. I think I'm missing a lot of stuff, actually. Well, I got my paper clips back. There goes the screw. How does this make any sense? There's the red wire again. Okay, let me put all these back out here. Or at least when I can grab. Okay, this seems like a power source of some kind. So I put the wire there, and I lost the red wire again. This is literally impossible. I know you think I'm missing something, but... Uh, 
Oh, I had to put everything in there. Hey, it works! Kinda. The radio springs to life. Whoa, we did it! Oh. Joseph speaks into the receiver. Hello? Hello? Can anyone hear me? Oh. He tries a few other channels. Nobody responds. We might be a little far out. I don't think anyone's in range. There's anyone in range. How big's the range? Well, this radio came with the boat when my dad bought it in the 60s, so not great. That's reassuring. Now what? There's worse places to be stuck than on a yacht. Wine? Wine. <laughs> I keep a couple emergency bottles below deck. Wanna go grab some while I fiddle with this radio some more? Sure. Let's see. Wine, wine. It's gotta be around here somewhere. For an old yacht, this lounge is pretty high to class. Wood panels on everything, leather couches. It's like an old Playboy photo shoot in here. Oh, a California king. Swanky. It's on made and a little messy. Less swanky. For an old yacht, this lens is pretty high glass. There are some clothes strewn on the floor by the bed. Socks, slacks, yep, a pink polo shirt. Well, I guess now I know if Joseph prefers boxers or briefs. This place seems a little lived in. Hmm. For an old yacht. Hey, wine glasses! I must be on the hot trail, but no wine. I grab two glasses and go back to searching. And took a look at everything on the shelf. There's a few photos on the wall here. It looks like a picture from Joseph and Mary's wedding day. Nice grandpa glasses. Looking real slick there, Joe. Another picture of Mary and Joseph on this very yacht. Quality 90s fashion right th here. Mary still has her patented stink face, but at least uh, Joseph seems happy on the water. Hey, it's all the dads. Looks like it's from a couple years ago. The gang's all here. Brian, Matt, Hugo, Craig, Damien, Robert. Wow, Robert's actually smiling and wearing a sweater. That's... I know that's a sweater. I know that sweater. And there's one guy on the end that I don't recognize. Hugo's ex, maybe? And hey, here's Joseph go-karting with kids. That's fun. I take a look at everything on the shelf. Looks like a bunch of different Bibles on brand. A couple of old vet magazines. I guess those must be Mary's. Wait a minute. Is this? Well, well. Now the hot body shoe is on the other hot body foot. I took a look at everything on the shelf. What did I find? Did I find erotica? Or did I find a hot picture of Joseph Topless? Now, if there's one thing Joseph does right, it's the odd stuff he puts on the shelves. I take a moment to closely examine what I think is an old submarine clock. Ah, and there's the crosses again. Boy knows his crosses. Really cool design, too. It's a sturdy cabinet. A little dusty, but I bet there are some treasures there. In here. Look, you can tell a lot of ma about a man by how seriously he takes his fire safety. Nice, Joseph. Nice. Well, this is a solution to a different problem. Maybe if we're stranded out here for days and run out of electricity, we'll need these. But chief concern right now is the wine intake. It's a sturdy cabinet. Hey, it's wine! A whole, dr a whole drawer full of wine. It's a Yacht Club miracle! Twilight Ruse, huh? Come to Daddy. Finally, time to get back up to Joseph. I 
I bring the wine and glasses up to the deck to find Joseph still hunched uh-huh. over the radio. Theodore, wine. Good to see you two. Just in time for the sunset. I didn't take you for a drinker. Haven't you heard? I'm a cool minister. How cool. Oh. I can land half of my kickflips. What is that like? Uh. Four? Five on a good day. Pour me. Power pour. I don't need to do a power pour, but I want to. Oh, that was good. Well, okay, time to party. We clink our glasses and drink up. This one's not bad. There's a hint of... Am I tasting grapes? You have a discerning palate. It might be grapes. Joseph and I lounge on the deck with our yacht wind, taking in the ocean air. The sun starts to dip below the horizon. We could be stranded out here forever. I can't think of anyone else I'd want to be stranded with. It's just you, me, and all those whales. So many whales. You're killing the vibe. Revive the vibe, Theodore. Generally, it takes three days and a gigantic stone door rolled in front of a tomb. But I think we can save it. Uh. This view, though. I mean, there's something a lot prettier right in front of me. Sweet, full-bodied. God damn. Joseph, I... This wine, so good. God damn. Do you like your mysteries, hot body? Oh, Kirk Douglas! Oh, Kirk Douglas! It's a really rewarding series, Theodore. Uh-huh. Uh. Look, you have fun with your word jumbles. I will enjoy... I will enjoy the well-crafted narrative excellence of a highly regarded serial of sex books. Detective novels. Sexy detective books featuring a hard-boiled gumshoe who can't be held down by the law or love or by the mystery of the Spanish lover. You read them too! The author really hit her stride around book 17. I could go to take another sip of wine but stop myself. Is one an acceptable beverage in the margarita zone? That it is, Theodore. All beverages of leisure are welcome in the margarita zone. This is almost what we wanted, right? <laughs> no responsibilities, no worries, other than possibly dying out here. And the whales. But yeah, I say we're in the zone. Joseph and I clink our wine glasses again. To the margarita yeah. zone. Wasted away again. If you have any salt shakers, we can arrange them into a pentagram and summon Jimmy Buffett. Maybe he can save us. As a youth minister, I make packs with neither the devil nor island jammers. If we're gonna, if we're to get off this boat, it'll be by the grace of God (laughs) or Steely Dan. Ha, amen. Our laughter dies down. We're both in silent. We're both silent for a moment. Looking into each other's eyes. Joseph leans in closer. I feel myself doing the same. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. I can't help but feel like doing this will only end up hurting someone else. But his face is really close to mine. Theodore, I have to tell you something. Mary and I are done. I pull back and I think about the clothes strewn around the lounge. The undone bed. Are you... Living on this boat? I I didn't want to mention it, but... He sighs, strolling back to the controls of the boat. I lean on the console next to him. We had a very long talk, and it's unsalvageable. I'm staying here until everything's sorted out. Oh, I'm so sorry. If there's anything I can do, I'm fine. I'm fine, actually. It was a long time coming. For the first time in a long time, I'm seeing a path to happiness. And I can focus on myself and stop trying to deny the things that make me happy. I need someone who will be there. Someone kind and honest. And you deserve that, Joseph. You really do. Anyway, I've been having this crazy feeling there's someone who I could get in the habit of having around. Someone very close to here. 
Oh. Is it Wales? I mean you. Oh. oh. I was trying to be subtle. I think I'm picking up what Joseph's putting down. I lean forward, clapping, closing the gap between us when Joseph grabs the receiver. Uh. Come in, come in. Is anyone there? Uh, no. Over. We're stranded out on open waters. We've been out here for hours. Please send help. Over. But wait, are you guys going to kiss? I mean, what are your coordinates? Over. Theodore, have you been leaning on the talk button this whole time? I look down. Oh. Oh, I definitely been leaning on the talk button. Betrayed by my own butt yet again. I didn't lean on it. You lean on it. Neither of you were leaning on the talk button. We didn't hear anything. Over. Hey, were you listening to us? So are we here at the Coast Guard are professionals? We were not doing that. But as professionals, it seems like you deserve happiness, and we think it's closer than you think. Um, over. Hasn't so could you guys be here to give us a tow? Over. We'll, uh, pick you up in the morning. Sounds like you two have some stuff to hash out. Over and out. Wait! Silence. Nobody returns their radio calls. I think they left. We stare at each other for a second. Well... Joseph carefully places the receiver on the table, making sure that the talk button isn't talk buzz button isn't pressed in. Well, okay. Joseph grabs me by the shirt and pulls me into a kiss. His lips, his lips are soft and sweet from the wine, his and his skin is still warm from the sun. I reach for his belt and pull him even closer, running my free hand under his shirt and up his side. He pushes me against the boat's console, kissing down my neck. Come on. His hands drift to, to my thighs every effortlessly and picks me up. Wow. Joseph carries me below deck. I'd be lying if I said I hadn't fantasized about this, but I didn't think he'd be so aggressive. I've wanted this for so long. He throws me onto the bed. I let out a little <laughs> yelp. Lots of time to kill, Theodore. We better get started. Yes, please. Oh, man. I might have overdone it on the wine last night. Just a few more minutes of sleep will do just fine. Wait. I open my eyelids, my eyes to find Joseph's face a few inches from mine, an arm slung around my waist. He's sleeping peacefully. His hair is messed up. Must and his lips still a little red. I think this is what I was talking about when we were discussing Margarita Zone. Finding little perfect moments of joy, like the way the light falls across Joseph's face, or how he's still holding me tight, even in his sleep. I'm very tempted to curl up closer to him and keep sleeping, but I know the Coast Guard will probably be here soon, and I'd like to be wearing clothes when that happens. I nudge Joseph. It takes a couple of shakes before he barely opens his eyes. When he notices me hovering over him, he breaks into a huge grin. We should get dressed. Joseph pulls me in for a kiss. Do we have to? Another kiss. Stop trying to tempt me. Fine, fine. <sighs> the Coast Guard eventually shows up and tows us back to the bay. They thankfully kept their keep their comments to themselves. Joseph and I step off the yacht, and he walks over to my car. I had a great time. Me too. No thanks to the whales. Nice. Shh. Shh. You're on land now. They can't hurt you here. Take care, oh. Joseph. You too. He gives me one last kiss on the lips before he turns around and walks back to his boat. Well, I've been gone an entire day. Hopefully Amanda is all right. Amanda, I'm dead! She runs up and hugs me. I was genuinely concerned about your well-being, but upon closer inspection, you seem to be okay. What happened? The yacht ran out of gas and we got stuck. But it was okay because I was on a yacht. Weren't you scared? Your father feel feels no fear. Were you able to take care of yourself for the night? Yeah, just did a ton of drugs, vandalized a few cars, 
and then embezzled some funds from my school. All in all, pretty low-key night. Where do you learn that from? I learned it from you, Dad. Well, if you did, you would have funneled those funds through a legitimate cash and carry business. Fudging the books over the course of years so you don't arouse suspicion from the feds. Rookie mistake, Panda. I'm glad you're back in one piece. Did you make good choices? Yeah. I think I did. But hey, I'm starving. Want to make sandwiches out of whatever we can find in the fridge? More than anything, Pops. Date complete. Thank you so much. Okay, Joseph, you better tell me your secrets. No, and then oh. I gotta get food. <laughs> hey. I haven't eaten yet. <clears throat> yeah. Oh no, Mary's here. With everything that's happened between me and Joseph, I should be a good go host and say hi to her. But I don't wanna. Come on, Theodore. You can do this. I walk up to Mary. Hey. Hey. You been good? Just peachy. I have to go over there now. That went about as well as I could have expected it to. Hey. <laughs> Bro. Hey. Oh. Hey. Matt. Too much. Too much fast forwarding! The sun is setting and someone and everyone seems to have eaten their fill. As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat next to Joseph. Joseph, it's so great to see you again. Great party. I should have you organize our next youth group mixer. My dance skills are ready whenever you need them. Hey, if you weren't busy this weekend, I was thinking maybe we could catch a movie or something. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like it would be fun. This feels weird. It doesn't feel like it did on the yacht. So, uh, I guess things are still friendly with Mary? Uh. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about that. Joseph sighs. Uh. We talked, and we talked for a long time, and there was some yelling and some crying. But ultimately, there was con reconciliation. I'm sorry, Theodore. I have to make this work with Mary. Oh. Hmm. I know I shouldn't have. <clears throat> I didn't mean to hurt you, and I'm really sorry you got caught up in all this. I just felt so alone lately, and I'm not even sure I'm doing the right thing here. Oh. You've come to mean so much to me, and... I'll never forget all those beautiful moments we shared on together. But I have to thank you. In a way, this whole thing you helped me... This whole thing with you helped me realize that I still love my wife. Very much. Oh, that's great. I know this probably isn't what you wanted to hear, and... I'm sorry if you were hoping for something different. But this is where my life is, and I need to do right by my family. But hey! Joseph squeezes my hand. We'll, all ha we'll always have margaritas on. Joseph stands up. Take care, Theodore. You too, Joseph. Joseph walks up. I... Man. Did I do something wrong? Was there another way this could have ended if I had done things differently? I walk over to the half-melted remnants of the ice cream cake and shove a forkful into my mouth. This ice cream cake is my new boyfriend.
Okay, there's got to be a way I got to I can get a better better ending. Okay, day Was it day 3 that was the A? Hmm. Okay. Let me grab something to eat while credits roll. Probably with Mary where I fucked it up. Mm hmm Say hi. Uh. Ah. I'm so happy. Mm. <sighs> yep, just a friend. That's funny. Joseph usually likes his friends to have a to at least have a spine. <laughs> we can't all be as blunt as you are, Mary. I'm just trying to be there for my friend, okay? Oh, you're there for him. I see, I see how you look at him. I bet you're there for him a lot. <laughs> I don't think there's any way to win that conversation. Huh? Oh. Oh no. Hmm. that changed anything. <laughs> I love you too, Dad. Welcome. You've got dads. I'm sure. That radio. Whoa! 
examine the shelf. Get the food out of the in-betweens of my teeth. What's it like owning a yacht? Fuel prices are on the wrong rise. Yearly maintenance is a bit of a strain on the finances. Can't really take it out on in the winter months. Oh. But also sometimes you can have a party on your yacht and everyone thinks you're cool. So it even oh. out, evens out. Theodore, if you had a yacht, what would you name it? Fuck you, whales. I like whales. The salt is <laughs> Joseph took some as wine. You know, like the bird. Wait, did you think oh. I meant nothing? Nothing at all. I bet we'll have a whale of a time. <laughs> Back to whales, huh? I'm trying to alleviate my fear of whales by making jokes about them because I don't have any healthier coping oh. mechanisms. Cheers to that. Hopefully that works out better. <laughs> Do I get a nest this time? I gotta get tips. How do I get a secret ending? Because I need to know what it is. Google, I need to know. I mean, hopefully. There's a written guide. Uh, not who. How? Get drunk. Secret ending. Okay. Keep in mind.
Okay, so... There is... No way to get the secret ending in... Anymore? Because the file for it was removed. Which is why it's a secret ending. Yeah. But that will be it for Joseph, and I will go and watch someone who has the secret ending, so I have that information. But I now only have two dads left, Hugo and Dane, and um, Brian, not Dane. So until, so I will see you in the next episode. Stay lucky.